that's not the case, right? You've told you've told a, a you've told a lie. What what do you it's mean? A big, it's a big mistruth. Grace Mullane was from Essex in United Kingdom. She was born on the 2nd of December 1996 to Julian and David Mullane. She had recently graduated from the University of Lincoln with a degree in advertising and marketing. She was looking forward to a new chapter in life and had saved up for a backpacking tour after her graduation. Friends and family would describe her as a happy, sociable and kind-hearted girl. Before setting off, she decided to cut and donate her long hair to a charity called the Little Princess Trust. This charity provides real hair wigs free of charge to children and young people who have lost their own hair through cancer treatment. The caring 21-year-old graduate then headed to Peru in October 2018 before travelling to South America for six weeks. She then headed to New Zealand on the 20th of November and travelled around the Upper North Island. Just 10 days later, on the 30th of November, she arrived in Auckland, the city of where her tragic began. She stayed in a hotel on Queen Street called the Base Backpackers. To reduce the cost of her living, she shared a room with other travellers. To kill boredom, she would go on Tinder, and eventually she matched with 26-year-old Jessie Kempson. Initially, she was unsure about meeting up. But after some convincing, she decided to meet him on the 1st of December 2018, which was the day before her birthday. At 5.45pm, Grace arrived before Jesse and stood in front of the casino's 20-foot-tall Christmas tree waiting for him. On seeing how beautiful the Christmas tree was, she decided to take a picture of it and send it to her parents in Essex. Eventually, Jesse arrives and they greet each other with a hug. Then at 6pm, the two walked into an entertainment complex called Sky City to look for Andy's burger bar for dinner. They then ordered drinks and left the bar at 7.12pm. At 7.14pm, they enter the Mexican cafe for dinner, spending about an hour in there. Grace kept her friend, Amina, informed, telling her he's an oil manager who lives in a hotel and that she clicks with him. Jesse then took out his card and paid before leaving. Then at 8.27pm, they crossed Albert Street and headed to Bluestone Room. Before leaving that place, Grace went to the toilet and left her bag behind with Jesse. Wasting no time, Jesse then strangely searched her bag, then placed it back where she had left it. The two can be seen hugging and walking across the street heading to City Life Hotel. They enter the elevator and head to Jesse's room, and this was the last time Grace was seen alive on CCTV. In the hours that followed, she suffered immense pain and was brutally murdered. After Grace was murdered, Jesse can be seen leaving his hotel and entering a store. He brought a suitcase as well as some cleaning products before taking a taxi to rent a red Toyota Corolla. He then met up with another woman from Tinder for a date. However, they left early because when the woman was questioned, she said she found him very weird and he made her feel uncomfortable after having conversations about burying bodies. After the unsuccessful date, Jesse went to hire a carpet cleaning machine. When the staff at the hotel questioned him, he said he spilt red wine on the carpet and wanted to remove the staining. At 9.30 in the evening, Jesse was seen wheeling a hotel trolley with two suitcases. Offloading the suitcases into the Toyota he rented, he then left the car park. The next morning, at 7am, he entered a supermarket and purchased a shovel. Two and a half hours later, he went back to the hotel and parked his car at Wilson's car park. About 20 minutes later, at 9.58am, he arrives at Mint Dry Cleaners to have his clothes washed, in which he collected his clothing on the same day at 3.17pm. On the 5th of December, CCTV shows that Jesse went to several different locations only to dump things into the bin. On the other hand, Grace's family and friends were trying to get hold of her on the 2nd of December to wish her a happy birthday. However, they received no response. Grace had two phones, but it was both turned off and calls were going straight to her voicemail. 
This was very abnormal because Grace was really good at responding and she was also very active on social media. So not hearing from her, especially on her birthday, was very concerning. After three days of not hearing from Grace, her parents sensed something was really not right, so reported her missing on the 5th of December to the Auckland police. The police immediately contacted the hotel Grace stayed in and they went through the CCTV. They were able to confirm she had not checked out since her arrival on the 1st of December. At this point, the police were still not too worried as they thought she may have just found some new friends to stay with and didn't go on social media. However, they were quick to be proven wrong. Through the extensive amount of CCTV, the police were able to track down the man she met on Tinder. He was also the last person to have seen her before her disappearance. This man was Jesse Kempson. Furthermore, the police questioned Jesse about Grace. Tell us about Grace. Uh, so I was talking to Grace on Tinder. Yeah. Um, we'd matched on Friday. I saw that we'd matched um, the next day on the Saturday. Um, and then uh, we met at Sky City. And then we decided that we were going up to Andy's Burger Bar. Um, which is on the first floor. Hmm. Whose idea was it to go to that particular burger place? Me. Because I knew, I, I didn't initially know that she was real. What do you mean? Well, there's a lot of, so have you heard of catfish? No. So catfishing is where someone uses your profile, or uses your photos and pretends to be you and then meets, and you're a completely different person. Right. Um, and it's on Tinder, it's all about the way you look. Um, and so if they use more endearing photos, um, you're more likely to swipe for them. Okay. Yeah. How does, a, how does meeting in a public place sort of protect you from meeting someone who's not as good looking as... Well, there's security the there. Photo. So if she wasn't who she said she was, yeah. um, at least in my mind I'd feel safe. Right. Michael. Yeah, that's us. Down there? Yep. Is that before or after? That is after. Okay, and where are you guys going now? So she's going that way, and I'm going across the street. Where do, where do you walk? Uh, I go down Queen Street. Uh, no, I go down Victoria Street, uh, straight down to the bottom, and then hang a left and I head towards the viaduct. You go to the viaduct a bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You've, you've kind of walked in a bit of a funny direction if you were planning to go to the, the viaduct. Well, it's the direction I normally go. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I'm just sort of saying, like, if you were, if you were planning to go yep. to the viaduct. I normally go down Queen Street and then cross at the bottom of Queen Street, go through the, um the containers yeah. and then walk along, along the wharf. Yeah. Is there a particular reason you were going to do that? Uh, I feel safer down that way. Um, I... I don't know, I just... It's a lot safer for me to be walking down that way yeah. than walking down the back streets. Jesse claimed it was a lovely date and at 10pm they parted ways with a plan to meet up the following day. Of course this claim was not true because CCTV shows Grace had entered Jesse's room and they never parted ways. He also said he tried to get hold of her through Tinder but she apparently unmatched him. On the 5th of December the police arrived at the City Life Hotel for Jesse. Coincidentally, Jesse then comes back into the hotel and he spots the policeman. He then makes a swift turn and walks away. However, the police realise that that was the man they were looking for, Jesse Kempson. So they chase after him and he was subsequently brought in for questioning. I'm telling you, that bag is still in my room. What's in it? Nothing. Nothing's in it. What was in it then? Nothing. Where did it come from? The warehouse. Which warehouse? Uh, atrium. When did you buy it? That day, because I was going to have to move all my stuff out. Oh, I, I told you. Okay, no, no. That's not the case. Right. You've told, you've told a, 
you've told a lie. What, what do you it's mean? A big, it's a big mistruth. I was just panicking. Did you inflict any injuries on her that caused her to die? Uh, no. Did you kill Grace Mullane? No. Okay. And you're under arrest for the murder of Grace Mullane on or about the 2nd of December. Okay. You understand? Yep. Did you intend to cause her death? No. Are you ready to take us to where she is? Yeah. He told the police that when he woke up the next morning, he saw the lifeless body of Grace. In a panic, he puts her in a suitcase and buried her. Upon hearing this, the police then searched his room and found large amounts of Grace's blood all over the carpet. They then searched for Grace's body and found her buried in a muddy hole on Scenic Drive. At the time, 26-year-old Jesse Kempson was taken into custody on the 8th of December 2018. He was convicted in 2019 for the murder of Grace Millane and is jailed for life with a minimum non-parole period of 17 years. Jesse had a history of abusing women long before he met Grace. He was found guilty of serious violent and sexual charges against his ex-girlfriend. He once told her, you are going to die today then forced her to perform sexual acts on him before chasing her around the house with a knife. The ex-girlfriend then left Jesse in April of 2017 and was granted a protection order against him. Another incident happened in April of 2018, months before he murdered Grace, he raped a British woman. If you ever find yourself or someone you know who is suffering from domestic abuse, please seek help. Leave your comments down below, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, please do support our channel by subscribing, give us a like and share our video to people who may find our content interesting. Click here to watch another video if you're craving for more true crime content and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next upload. Stay alert and stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.